In today's free coaching video, we're doing part three of how to end emotional eating wildly a lifestyle and specifically teaching you how to stop using foods to suppress emotions like sadness, stress, anxiety, you name it. Life sounds like So when I was struggling with my body and self-image, if you've been watching the two videos, you know that I had a really dysfunctional relationship with both of those things. I rewarded myself with food, I disciplined myself with food, and I really abused my body, you know, which is kind of an intense word, but really looking back on it and how mean I was to her, it was abusive. Um, it, it was just really, really unhealthy and nowhere near what it is now. So I'm really here to help you find that place as well. And I'll never forget those moments in the kitchen when I would, I would just binge eat. Now, I don't know if you experienced this at all, but night times were a, a time of the day that I really feared. And I especially feared being home alone at night because I didn't trust myself with food. So that translated into a lot of binge eating. And I remember in my apartment, I would, ice cream was definitely a big thing for me. I would be leaning up against my cabinets and shoveling ice cream into my mouth. But while I was shoveling in the food, all I was thinking about was the next thing I was going to eat. I was totally in my head, nowhere in my body, and there was nothing present about it whatsoever. And as we've talked about in the last two videos, food is love and your body is love. And now I know that those are two you know, really heavy topics that are hard to cultivate and really embody in your everyday life, especially just learning it. But I want to make it clear that when you really start to live that and feel that, eating foods because you're stressed or sad or depressed or whatever happen much less often. So that's why it's imperative that you watch those other two videos, which the link is right below this video, and it will really tie in this third and final training. So I highly suggest you pause this video and you watch the other two first. For now, as you're learning this and really trying to embody this, because again, I know it takes time, I really want to give you some tools on how to handle you know, something like stress eating, which is something I think many women struggle with. I have obviously struggled with it myself, and, and give you some tangible tools on how to really take action today. So the best way for me to do this is to really paint a picture. So let's say that you had a super, super stressful day at work. The, the gossip queen at the office wouldn't leave you alone. Your boss dropped a deadline on you. And on top of it, the principal called you because one of your kids were totally acting out. Right? You have all this stress and anxiety in your body. You feel it all day long and you never come down. So when you get home and you open that front door and you beeline it to the kitchen, what emotion are you seeking in that moment? Relief, right? You're seeking a big <sighs> sigh of relief. So your automatic behavior without you even thinking is to run into the kitchen cabinet and grab the chocolate or the chips or anything to just help relax your tense body instantly. But this one time, I want you to be aware of the emotion you're seeking. Awareness is the first step to change. So even if the next time you do something like stress eating, but you're aware of the emotion that you're seeking, I want you to see that that is a part of the changing process. First come awareness, then comes action. So the second step in this whole thing is to replace the food with an experience. So with this example that we're talking about, you're seeking relief. Now, what are some things, some experiences that you can have that will invoke a feeling of relief? You could go and you could take a bath. 
You could go into your room and you could lay down on the floor, put your feet down, and just put your hand on your belly and breathe. Feel your body breathing for five minutes. You could go outside, you could take your shoes off and put your, gra- put your bare feet in the grass. Doesn't sound really relieving, but I'm telling you it is. You could let the sun hit your face. You could go for a walk. You could stretch. You could just really focus on nature and its beauty. So again, this takes time to really, you know, rewire your mind for success. So right now your mind is wired that when I'm stressed, I eat, I eat food. So give yourself time to kind of rewire and think, when I'm stressed, I do you know, A, B, or C. Again, having some sort of an action plan and writing some of the things that I just told you down on a piece of paper is really, really powerful. And what you could do is you could take that sticky note and you can put it on your cabinet and you could say, what are you really hungry for? And really is underlined and emphasized. And then you could refer back to this plan and say, okay, well, let me just try one of these things first. Don't tell yourself that you can't eat. That never works, trust me. But if you just use it as an experiment and say, okay, I'm gonna give this Nicole chick a chance and I'm gonna try one of these things on this plan and I'm gonna take it from there. And last but not least, I would love to keep this conversation going. So in the comment section below, I wanna hear what is the main emotion that you seek in food? Again, this is not a place to feel shame. This is where all of us women rally together and see that we're not alone and join this healing journey together. So obviously I could talk about this forever. Now if you'd like to go a little bit deeper on healing your relationship with your body and food, I highly suggest you check out the Wildly Alive Weight Loss Program. The link is right below this video. Now the doors aren't open now, but they will be soon, so I suggest that you hop on the pre-sale list so you're the first to know when the doors open. And as I say every week, if you're not having fun, it's your own damn fault. Bye.